Just who was David Koresh, the man who led his followers into a 51-day standoff with federal authorities? Fox News correspondent Eric Sean has a profile in the first of a special three-part Fox series on cults. He transformed this quiet Texas pasture into a valley of death and in doing so turned an obscure, peace-loving religious commune into one of the nation's most violent and dangerous cults. David Koresh long declared himself Jesus Christ, but his twisted religious vision mixed the word of the Lord with heavy weapons, and he prepared his devoted disciples for a violent ending in which he would be resurrected and they would rule the earth. If authorities had been aware of complaints against Koresh for years and he was assembling this uh, arsenal of weapons, why wasn't he stopped sooner? I think that it's a matter of an, it's investigation. What you do is you put the case together. You put the probable cause together to use whatever techniques are available to you. Uh, it's a matter of just getting, getting the information together, and you have a lot of other things to do. There is a battle between good and evil, between every individual and themselves, you know? Between what's right is right, it's Christ, and what's wrong is wrong, that's the devil. And I have to admit, doing right in my life and doing wrong in my life. Koresh was born Vernon Howell 33 years ago in Houston, a high school dropout and failed rock musician who found his calling in the scriptures. He created an isolated and armed sanctuary named Mount Carmel, with underground bunkers and tunnels and fortress-like defenses, a small kingdom allegedly financed by his followers who gave him everything they owned. Ex-members say Koresh claimed other men's wives for himself, as many as 19 women who bore him 10 children, and he told his cult members what to eat and wear and banned smoking and drinking. One ex-wife, Robin Buns, claims Koresh had sex with many underage girls. He can be, become very violent. And um, what made me leave was that he was just very abusive to me verbally. If God and guns are Texas religions, this is where Koresh found his earthly salvation. He gained power in 1987 after a bloody shootout here at the compound with the cult's former leader. He was then able to beat charges of attempted murder, along with seven other members. That's when he first ordered his disciples to start arming themselves for the final apocalypse. Well, they were using them for just uh, sport shooting, uh, you know, uh, like most people who buy that type. They were Ruger Mini-14 rifles. Waco gun dealer Leo Bradshaw, who sold Chorus semi-automatic rifles, said his customers showed no sign of the violence to come. They were fairly withdrawn and kind of tended to stay by themselves and leave everybody else alone, and this would be the last thing you'd ever expect. While many in this central Texas town of 100,000 had not known of the cult before February's assault, others predicted Koresh would lead a Branch Davidian Holocaust by teaching salvation could only be achieved with death. The primary issue is, is uh, your eternal destiny. I mean, salvation is ultimately the goal, and if, if you don't adhere to the tenets of, of the particular group or sect or cult, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, the, the potential danger is uh, losing your salvation, ending up in eternal hell. There's a nightmare living in Waco. Koresh apparently created his own hell on earth, and in the end, it was the salvation his followers were promised. I'm Eric Sean, Fox News. If you think the lure of a potentially violent cult could never reach out and grab you, think again. As Fox's Christopher Jones explains in this special report, experts say the pull of a leader like David Koresh can prove tempting to anyone. David Koresh and his Branch Davidians are a terrifying example of cults out of control. But cults are not rare. In fact, some estimates put the number of different cults operating in the United States at between three and 5,000. For family and friends, those numbers are frightening because just about anyone is vulnerable to seduction into the cultic life. People, when they feel depressed, begin to look for answers. And if they happen to meet, someone who promises them an absolute answer, who has no anxiety about his ability to provide an answer, then people can get caught up in this. For those who are seduced into cults, the consequences can be devastating. Their lives transform to little more than slavery. 
Total control. They basically told me when to wake up, when to go to sleep, what to eat, when to go to the bathroom. They arranged my marriage to a man who I didn't love and had a hard time liking. Um, they basically tell you when you can and can't have children. Um, so basically everything was under their control. But as hellish as the personal world of a cult member can become, as the tragedy in Waco, Texas has shown, cult members themselves can kill, all in the name of the cult leader. There are many cult members, and most of them that I have seen who are former cult members, and we've seen about 3,000 over the years uh, come through the cult clinic. Pretty much most of them say that I, I, would have, I would have killed. I would have done that. Cults kill in recent American history has the scars to prove it. For sheer madness and meanness, it would be hard to find more grim reminders than the People's Temple of Jim Jones and the Charles Manson family. Manson, a drifter who had been in prison most of his life, somehow gained such total control of many of the people he met that their commitment to him was absolute. On a summer's night in 1969, Manson sent four members of his so-called family to the Bel Air, California home of movie director Roman Polanski. There, they terrorized and killed five people. Among the murdered, beautiful actress Sharon Tate, just 26 years old and eight months pregnant. Tate was stabbed 16 times, then hanged. The next night, Manson's cult followers killed two more people, and on both occasions, the killers scrawled in the blood of their victims the words pig and helter-skelter on the walls. I don't like killing, but I'm just like anybody else. I can when I'm pushed to do that. Nowhere was the total control of a cult leader over his followers more clear or more deadly than in the town in Guyana that self-styled evangelist Jim Jones named for himself. There had been reports that Jim Jones had been sexually abusing and virtually imprisoning some of the cult members who had made that long pilgrimage with him to the deep jungle and his people's temple in Jonestown, Guyana. You don't know how clever I am. One thing you've all done is underestimate me. When Congressman Leo Ryan led an investigative team to Jonestown in 1978, Ryan and four other people with him were shot dead. Shortly afterward, in one of the most horrifying examples of mind control, Jones led more than 900 of his cult followers, men, women, and children, to death. Suicides by drinking Kool-Aid laced with cyanide. I don't mind losing my life. What about you? I'm just no longer afraid, and I've lost interest in this old world. Jones, Manson, and now David Koresh are extreme examples of cults out of control. But other groups, including religious ones, often use similar techniques of recruitment, and no one should be considered totally immune. There's a belief that, you know, this only happens to people who are, you know, stupid or who are in crisis or for whatever reason they're kind of just messed up. And I, I just, you know, I want to say that that's just absolutely not true. Um, it happens to anybody. Experts say that cults like to look for young people in their college years. Apparently, it is at this time when a lot of kids are at their most vulnerable periods with a lot of questions and not many answers. The cults will provide some of these answers and in return take complete control. How complete? Well, a cult leader may give an order to kill, even kill yourself, and expect to be obeyed. Christopher Jones, Fox News.